So, let's talk about pressure. In this chapter, it's all about forces and fluids. There's three main ideas in the book, and I'm going to give you a fourth. The main ideas are Pascal's principle. Okay, okay, the book has four and I have five. I have one. So it's pressure. What is pressure? Then it talks about Pascal's principle, Bernoulli's principle, Archimedes' principle. I'm going to add a fourth, and that pressure goes from high to low. Is that fine? Pressure, Pascal's, Archimedes, Bernoulli's, that's four, and I'll, the fifth one is my high to low. Oh, so pressure always goes from high to low. That is because pressure is force over area. If you have a greater force over an area, then it's going to be able to push its way to the lower force over an area. So it always goes from high pressure to low pressure, and that's pretty much meteorology in a nutshell. Where is the pressure low? Okay, that's where the weather's going to be going into. All right? And that's where you're going to get weather. Nice little low pressure. All right. So that's meteorology in a nutshell. Well, Pascal's principle, uh, he essentially said that within a fluid, force is equally distributed in all directions. So you're going to push this direction, but within the fluid, so long as within a contained system, it's going to go equally in all directions. And Cartesian diver uh, demonstrates that well. So... You take a look at this, and I'm going to apply pressure with my hand, pushing this way and this way, but the Cartesian diver is going to experience a force this way, this way, this way, this way, and upwards as well. So, yeah, so what you'll find is you have the empty uh, eye dropper, and it's full of air, but it's also experiencing push upwards, because according to Pascal, it's in all directions, and sure enough, he's right. So it's upwards, and so it's pushing water into and compressing that air, that eyedropper, in the air eyedropper. And so, sure enough, the density of the eyedropper decreases, and so it sinks, right? So you push it, and sure enough, it falls down. And you can factor that, and you can look at the uh, air within the eyedropper as it decreases, therefore decreasing the density. I'm sorry, increasing the density as it sinks. Okay? So that gives in all directions. So that's lovely Pascal for you. Um, and that works quite well, but... Let's talk about something else first. Within a fluid, so let's say we have uh, pressure here, pressure here, pressure here. Of these three pressures, which one of these is the largest? What? The bottom. The bottom one. You say that this is number one and this is number three? Yes. Making a number two. Very good. Okay, so why is the bottom on the highest pressure? Yes? Well, it has the weight of it on. It has the weight of it on. We talked about this before. Weight is what? Is a force. And force is measured in? Newton. Newton. So, if we have a weight here happens to be a force over a given area, right? And then we have this weight and this weight and this force and this force and this force and sure enough, they all add up until finally get to right here, and this bit of water is experiencing tremendous pressure. Right? So let's play the balloon game. So what do we take an ordinary balloon? Right? We take an ordinary balloon, and we suddenly put it down here. What's going to happen to that balloon? Yes? It takes plane. Yes? It takes plane. Yes? Okay, well, let's say we put a rock on it. Okay, I'll stay down there. And what else? Yes? It will, like, almost this. Okay. Yeah, it's going to get really small. It so it's going to get flow. really small. It Why does it get so small? Oh. Yes? Because there's greater pressure here. So here, there's all kinds of pressure on it. Here, there's just a little bit of pressure. <laughs> right? So it's going to compress. Gas is highly compressible. Let's do it on the other hand. Let's take a... Uh, okay. So let's say we get into our submarine. So we're in our submarine. High-tech submarine. And we blow up a balloon, and then we release it. Okay? So right here is our balloon, and then here it's going to get released. So what's it going to be like up there? Yep. Um, broken. Okay, so it's going to get very big until finally the elastic's going to break, right? Why does it get so big up there? Yes? Because you had all that compressed air down in the pressure, and then it's like, it, there 
Okay, so big pressure here, not as big pressure here, right? And it goes from high to low, so which one has the higher pressure? Here, this is high pressure to low pressure, so it's pushing back. This is the, this is equal, right? So equal pressure here and here. All right, so let's take a look at another one. What if, on the other hand, uh, it's a camel. It's a ship. It's a city. It's a city. It's an elephant. It's a It's a town. It's a town with a mountain. It's a condo. It's Colorado. It's Colorado. It's a camel. It's a camel. It's a it's a ghost with a flat top smoking a cigarette. Okay. So, it's a city on a camel. All right. So we got a mountain top here with the bird's nest on top. We got some cities and birds and ship and an ocean, right? So, and we have five different pressure points. Of these five pressure points, which one is the greatest? Which one has the greatest pressure, i.e. force over area? Yep. Uh, under the ocean. This one right here or this one right here? Uh, oh, the sure. Bottom one. Perk says number one. How many people agree with Perkle? One person, two people, three, four, I agree. five. Okay, I think we should agree. Mr. Dahl, which one has second most pressure? Yes, exactly. Number two. Yeah. And sure enough, it keeps on going in like manner. So, what you'll find is hey guys, as you go through the depths of the ocean, pressure increases, right? Yeah. So, pressure increases as you go down. In the ocean, in the ocean of air, the same thing happens because now you have more mass. Why? Because atmosphere is made of air. Air has mass. The more mass you have, the more weight you have. The more weight you have, the more force you have. Right? So if you have air, oh dear, here goes my green one. So if you have air on air on air on air on air, sure enough, it adds up until finally, right down here at sea level. We've got something like, what, 14.7 pounds per square inch? 101 kilopascals. Or what, what? 101 kilopascals. 101 kilopascals. So if air pressure, all kinds of air pressure versus up to here, right? So how come we don't feel it, Miss Overture? Because, uh, oh, uh, uh, how come we don't feel it? It helps. I see. Yes? We're pushing out. Yeah, we're pushing out just as much as pushing in. So our body is acclimated to it. Okay? Now, if you go up in an airplane where there's lesser pressure, let's say at 30,000 feet, what happens to our body? You're in the airplane. It's used to pushing out at 14.7 pounds per square inch, right? Yeah. Air pressure within an airplane at 30,000 feet is less than at zero feet. So you'll find that your body expands a little bit. If you ever do that, you take off your shoes. And then try to put them back on in about an hour. You'll find that your feet have swollen. You swell, people, when you're in an airplane. Is that cool? That's why I always take my shoes off in an airplane. Yeah, that's why your feet, if you have tight shoes already, they get tighter when you're up in the air. Yeah. So you, if you feel a little fatter, it's not true. You're just uh, more volume, the same mass, so therefore you are... So you should less never dense. go on, you should go, you, you, should, in the air. you should get weight on the biggest loser in a plane. It's the same math. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, Mr. Shoes, why is there more? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, David, air pressure. Now, okay, so let's try another one. Let's take, okay, so this is a airplane, lovely airplane. Good stuff. And airplane. Okay, so it, now it's an airplane. I can't tell. So, you got an airplane at 30,000 feet, an airplane at no feet. Yes? Yes. So. It looks like a swastika. Doesn't that remind you of a swastika? No, not really. Guys, what? Stop talking about swastika. It's not a swastika. Swastika is the other way. But it reminds. Okay, so you got an airplane that's up in the air, right? Yeah. Less pressure or more pressure? Uh, less. Less pressure. 
pressure. Far less there. pressure. So they are pushing on less air molecules as they jet around, right? Down below here, it's pretty easy to get the thrust you need because you're pushing on a lot of air molecules. A lot of air molecules are pushing on you. Let's take another example. What if, hey guys, what if you took this plane up and kept the pressure inside the airplane the same as it was at ground level? What would happen to the airplane? What would it do? It would explode, right? All of a sudden, you have this high air pressure in. Remember, it always goes from high to low. And so you have high on the inside, trying to go low on the outside, and push it out. It's going to blow up your airplane. So they still want people to be comfortable, so they don't keep it pressurized, but they keep it partially pressurized. So it's not quite at sea level pressure, but it is enough that it makes it nice and comfortable. When they talk about comfortable, they talk about breathing. How do you breathe in? It's all about pressure. How do you breathe in? What, what causes you to breathe in? You open air your lungs. Lung volume in your lungs. Exactly. So you lower your diaphragm, your lungs expand, which creates greater area, Mr. Dahl. Right? Creates greater area, which means it's higher or lower pressure on the inside. It's lower pressure than on the outside. So high pushes in. You breathe in. Right? However, however, if they didn't partially pressurize the airplane, you get up at 30,000 feet, there's very little pressure. And so you don't have that high pressure on the outside. And when you lower your pressure, you don't have that push inside. So you'd have to keep lowering it to try to get it lower than the outside pressure. It's hard to breathe. Right? On the other hand, it's very easy to exhale when you're up there because... Because on the inside, it's going to be higher than on the outside. Make sense? So that's exactly what happens. So you take a pair of lungs, right? So you got these uh, little red balloons. It's a pair of lungs. This is your diaphragm. If you lower your diaphragm, you're increasing the volume of your lungs, and they get bigger. You close your diaphragm, and it pushes on the lungs, pushes the air out. You ever, you ever uh, hear that video? Every breath I take, every move you make. Or Darth Vader. <laughs> what happens if the mouth is closed? Nothing. Nothing. So you need an open airway for lungs to work. Yeah, you can pass yeah. it around. Don't bring it. What about your nose? Uh, what? Same thing. It starts in my nose. Uh, let's see. No. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not.